Hello everyone. Um, this is my second from video um, and today I really wanted to focus on the application of some of the things that, that from is talking about because um, um, the definition of learning is a relatively permanent change in thought or action by an organism based on experience. So if you can't use the things that he's talking about to again actively you know change your change your actions then um, you haven't really learned anything you just sort of you know, you may as well not have even read the book. So what I wanted to talk about specifically was the having and being mode because that so directly relates to, like, the application. Um, and I thought, I thought his, his stuff about conversing was really interesting because um, I think it's, it's sort of universal. Like, to actually be able to have a genuine conversation with someone and to really, truly listen to another person is always really challenging. And, um... I think in like a, in, a, in an increasingly digital age where like so much communication is done by, you know, by email, by text message, um, whatever. It's almost like a dying art in a in a way um, to really have a face to face conversation with someone and really listen to them. So, um, so Fromm explains first the having mode of conversing with someone and what this looks like. And I think he, he explains first that the most recognizable form of, um, like, a having conversation usually is in, like, people who are debating something. Because um, neither one expects the other to change their mind. Um, and neither expects to have their own mind opened. So, basically... You, you kind of have two people just yelling at each other. They're both, they're, their only objective is to find the, mo the best way to convince the other person that they're right. And really they're not, um, when you break it down, they're really not even arguing about, you know, politics, religion, whatever. They're really just trying to prove who's better, who's more knowledgeable. And they might as well just be screaming, I'm better, I'm smarter, I'm better, I'm smarter. And see who can yell it louder because nobody's listening to anybody. That's about as deep as you're going to get when that's your primary objective. So, so you have debate, but the having mode of conversing can come in a much subtler or a much more subtle form. Um, and, and that often happens not when people are, are arguing or are debating something, but when you're conversing with someone from whom you want something. Um you know, be it a job, or, you know, to be loved, to be admired. And I think a lot of really charming people um, who are really great conversationalists, like, they're in the having mode still. They're still focused mostly on themselves when they're having a conversation. So, um, I think that kind of ties into what we are, um, to what we've talked about, where, um, like, Squires keeps saying over and over, like, this stuff doesn't make you more popular. It doesn't make your life more fun or, or easier. And I think, like, when you recognize the having mode um, in conversations, you see when people do it to you. When, when you're like, okay, like, you are listening to me. You could, or you're, you're hearing me. You could um, repeat back to me the ten words that I just said, but you have no idea what I'm actually saying. Um... And you're just, like, nodding and making affirming noises, but it's not, like, affecting you as an individual. You're just kind of agreeing with me so that I'll like you. And it's, it's kind of shallow. It's frustrating to speak to people who are like that. Um, so, yeah, in that, back to that having mode of conversing. When you're in the having mode, um, you're, like, psyching yourself up to go talk to somebody. You're, you're trying to think about your own accomplishments, how, like, charming and witty you are, and you're trying to, to find the best way to display that to the other person. So, really, you're not really forming a connection with that, uh, with that other person. Um, you're not learning about them or broadening your own, like, insights or anything. You're just focusing on how great you are and trying to convey that, which is really kind of... It's kind of a shallow and, like, a fruitless thing because, like, if you were really secure with yourself as an individual, you wouldn't need to do that. It's kind of just, like, displaying your own insecurity. It's displaying your own inability to just kind of let be. And it's kind of, a f like, a, f I don't know, it's kind of a frustrating experience because 
I don't know, like, how do you know when you've really convinced them, you know? So, um, so Fromm goes on to talk about the being mode of learning, and I'm going to read what he says, because I think it's really kind of fantastic. In contrast are those who approach a situation by preparing nothing in advance, not bolstering themselves up in any way. Instead, they respond spontaneously and productively. They forget about themselves, about the, about the knowledge, the possessions they have. Their egos do not stand in their own way, and it is precisely for this reason that they can fully respond to the other person and that person's ideas. They give birth to new ideas, because they are not holding on to anything, and can, do, and can thus produce and give. While the having persons rely on what they have, the being persons rely on the fact that they are, that they are alive, and that something new will be born, if only they have the courage to let go and respond. So, again, when you can really respond to someone, and you're really having a genuine conversation with them, it's not based on, like, displaying your wares or whatever. You forget about yourself, and just forget on, and uh, blah, blah. just focus on giving life to this conversation, giving birth to new ideas. It's really kind of a gorgeous experience. Again, you give birth to new ideas. You can give and and give life to something entirely new. Whereas if you hold on to your possessions and focus only on, like, what you have and you're, like, just, like, gripping these, like, like, your own accomplishments and everything, it's kind of a deadening experience. Um, you're not really getting closer to yourself or to the other person. You're just sort of focusing on what you have. Um, and again... It's, you know, it's a strangling, it's a deadening, it's a frustrating experience. Um, and so I think, again, if you want to be in conversations, as Fromm says, you prepare nothing in advance. You don't psych yourself up. You just have, you just let be. You just let yourself, um, you just trust yourself to come across as the individual that you are. And you can respond fully and spontaneously and listen fully to what the other person's saying and have a genuine connection with them. So, um, so there you have it. Um, that's the having and being mode in conversations. Um, feel free to comment if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, if you have suggestions on how to have, you know, on, on what having and what being looks like in conversation. So thanks for watching.